Audio drama in the age of Arthur. TheTableRound.com In peace and war he was renowned, and good King Arthur was his name. Or Christendom, where mortals lived, was spread wide his deathless fame. The Immortal Legends of the Table Round, Chapter 6, Baden Hill. The struggle between the forces of Britain, unified under the dragon banner of the High King Arthur, and the invading Saxons has raged for years. Victory after bloody victory has led the High King inexorably towards this final showdown. The Saxon army besieged the old Roman fort at Baden Hill, and Arthur rode to the rescue. Circle round, men! Take that clearing. Prepare the archers. Their lines are breaking. Don't let up. For Britain and King Arthur. <laughs> Death on them all! Send these Saxon dogs straight to hell! Run! Run, you Saxon pigs! You can't run fast enough! Dreadful days and nights, the armies clashed. The grass was drenched with blood, and the casualties numbered in the tens of thousands. And at the dawn of the fourth day, the sun rose over a free Britain. Bedivere, where is the king? He's been up there. He's just wandering around that hilltop since the fighting stopped. He won't answer me. Is he wounded? No, sir. But he's pale, and his eyes are glassy. He has never left my sight. You do your duty well, Marshal, but I must speak with him. Is he all right, Druid? I suspect he will be. Arthur, Art, wake up, lad. What? What? Merlin? It's me. Dear heaven, was I asleep? Bedivere says you've just been wandering, unspeaking, staring off into the distance. I don't remember the last time I sheathed Excalibur. We've just kept fighting. For so long. How can the sun be rising? This happens. I think your father was in a battle haze throughout half of his victories. Victory? Yes, lad. So, it's over. The battle? Yes, you won, your highness. And the Saxons? All slain or fled to the last man. So it's over? The war. It's over? Let's go home, lad. It's over. It's all over. Oh, sweet God in heaven, it's finally over. Ave Maria. Gracia plena Dominus, tecum benedicta tu, in mulieribus et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Iesu. Amen. Arthur, you are not with the men celebrating. No, Lancelot. I left too much of my soul on that battlefield. I need to recover. Then I shall stay. Please do. Although if any man should celebrate, it is you. The men idolize you. 
Your tactics won us this day. The hearts of your men won the day, Arthur. The courage of a unified Breton won the day. I'll drink to that. I still can't believe it's over. The Saxon warships burnt their dragon ships so they could not retreat. We made them regret that. Mm. And the survivors? There's a few hundred that remain are huddled together at Dover, rebuilding ships to retreat under the eye of King Conan. And that's all that's left. Dear Lord. You know, they say you killed 960 men. What? Is that even possible? All tales grow in the telling. Wait. I'm trying to do the figures. In three days, that's 300 and... Uh... 20. 320 men a day. That's almost 30 men an hour. It simply couldn't be done. It is not important. It would be an ignoble thing to count. Ignoble. Yes, of course it is. Just what I was going to say. How many did you get, Ancelot? 969. <laughs> <laughs> so this is where the king and his commander hide from the feast. Merlin! Lord Merlin. Sir Lancelot. Arthur tells me you have traveled to lands as far as Budapest and distant Jerusalem. Merlin has even dined with the king of the Ethiops. Well, I had to do something waiting for you to grow up. And on these journeys, you've studied castles and fortifications. Amongst many other things. And that is why Merlin will be chief architect of our new capital. We'll ride to the site tomorrow. It's not far from Caerleon, just downriver from Astolot. The Romans had a fort there, but it burnt decades ago. But when Merlin is done, it will be the grandest keep in all of Britain. Tell me, Archdruid, how can we improve our defenses? Well, the first thing I plan to implement is building round towers. <laughs> round towers? That must look ridiculous. Can they even stand? They are a grand engineering improvement, trust me. What next? Round keeps. Round chairs. Round tables. There's nowhere to aim a catapult. Oh, very astute of you. Ah. I hadn't thought of that. Obviously. The corners are a tower's weak point. With a round tower, there will be none. Could the same principles be applied to walls and uh, ramparts? There's a certain challenge to the construction, but yes. We have men already rebuilding the walls and cutting stone. Merlin will oversee the keep and the grand cathedral. There should be real progress by fall. I foresee no great difficulty. Good, because it must be ready for the wedding. Wedding? Well, now that you're both here, I should probably tell you. I'm going to marry. Arthur. Enough, Merlin. I've thought this out. We don't really need any strong allies right now. The Irish won't even talk to us, so that Irish princess is not an option. King Claudius of Gaul teaches on the edge of defeat. The only legitimate royal candidate is the daughter of the King of Iceland, and she's only four. I can't wait that long. So since foreign alliance is not a possibility, my marriage must reward my most loyal subject king. And that's... Leodegrance of Camelot. And his daughter, Guinevere. Congratulations, Arthur. I know you think highly of her. Thank you. Kay has already been in talks with Leodegrance. Oh, keeping secrets, are we? You've been busy. What better way to bring the land together in peace than with a royal wedding? Cement our battle-forged bonds of friendship with a joyous celebration. When will this future queen be arriving? That's my next point. I need to stay here and oversee the capital, so I wanted to ask you, Lancelot. Will you go and escort Guinevere and her retinue here? She is most precious to me. It will be my honor. And when she is queen... I want to name you Queen's Champion. Sir Lancelot, congratulations. If my king thinks I am worthy. Time and time again on the field, you've proven yourself my greatest knight. Certes, the queen deserves a man of such great worship to protect her. I will strive to be worthy of such an honor. Thank you, Lancelot. I can't wait for you to meet her. Oh, happy day.
Gareth. Mm. Gareth, don't put your toy soldiers too close to the fire. The lead will melt. What word do you suppose that messenger brought, Mother? Mother is a queen, so it must be terribly important. Oh, yes. But she is a good queen, so nothing's beneath her notice. Oh, yes. What did the messenger bring you, Mother? Well, my darling Gareth, it's a letter from your uncle, the High King. What does it say, Mother? Don't interrupt, Agravaine. I'm reading. Well, Mother, what does it say? It's an invitation to the king's wedding. It seems that he's marrying some little nobody from Wales. Interesting. Where in Wales? Silence, Agravaine. Are we going to go? I think not, sweet boy. I'm not so certain King Arthur would be so pleased to see me, or little Mordred. But you're his sister. Surely but he... Orkney really should be represented. I'm sure the celebration will be quite grand, and we can't let such an important event pass us by. Hmm. Aggravain. Travel to the Castle Turok and meet with your Aunt Morgan. Travel with her to the King's wedding. Tell her to take some of our mother's jewels as a wedding present. It looks like neither of us will be cursed with a daughter, so this little Welsh girl is free to have them. Right out at dawn. It shall be as you say, mother. Perhaps in the king's court, with your brother Gawain as knightly example, you might finally shape up, becoming worthy of your family. I will try, mother. I want you to keep a close eye on this. Guinevere, report back to me everything you hear about her. I wish to know her measure. I will be your eyes and ears. Then why are you standing here? Go get packing. Aye, mother. Now come, Gareth. Come with mother. There is much to prepare for the fires of Beltane tonight. You seem pensive, my lady. Lost, perhaps, in thought. Does the maypole displease you? I can smite it with a bolt of lightning. Do you perhaps long for the older rites from before the Romans? Midnight bonfires or headdresses? <laughs> Stop being silly. I'm anxious for the arrival of the High King is all. Or at least his emissary. Hmm. So the king woos you, wins you, casts you aside, kills a few thousand Saxons single-handedly, begs for you back, and now can't be bothered to even come and claim you? Oh. You are being unkind, Menru. Arthur did not cast me aside. The king is no freer to choose his marriage than am I. Camelyard is honored, and I count myself fortunate to be chosen. Well, this night he sent, better hurry. I must tell you, Queen of May, with those flowers in your hair, I'm half tempted to abduct you to a fairyland and let you reign over an eternal spring morning. I'm seventeen, Menwu, far too old for your fairy stories. Besides, I'm going to be a queen. I wouldn't want to miss that. Now pass me those gooseberries. I just hope the king's beard's grown in. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. He's here! Sir Lancelot is here! And he's as handsome as they say. Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> that must be the great Sir Lancelot riding at the head of the procession. By Oberon's pointy hat, I've never seen armor so shiny. In those perfect black ringlets of hair, glittery blue eyes, a chin carved from granite. What do you say, my lady Guinevere? Are your women right to flutter about so? Is he as glorious as they all say he is? Hmm. He's not really my type. Hello, this is Danny Coles, and I played Sir Bedivere the Marshal. In the early 5th century, the Romans abandoned Britain, leaving the Britons a divided people when the Saxons invaded from what is now Germany. 
Faced with extermination, the Britons finally united and succeeded in driving back the Saxons. The final battle was fought at a location referred to in the Chronicles as Baden Hill, or Mount Badonicus. Historians are sure of very little of the siege, number of soldiers, the involvement of any historical Arthur, or even its location. But we do know the following. The Britons cast aside their differences to defeat the Saxons, ushering in a rare era of peace. Written by Morgan Z. Sowell. Produced by Lindsay Smith. King Arthur was played by Chandler Walpole. Lancelot was Joshua Kibbe. And Merlin was Blair Palmer Lee. Olivia Steele played Anna Margos. Richard Matheson played Agravane. And Danny Coles played Sir Bedivere. Also featuring the voice talents of Cathy Vargas as Guinevere. And Toddy Harold as Menno the Magician. Thomas McCutcheon was Kay. David Kendall was Sir Hector, T.J. Lloyd was Grifflet, and Tom Southern was Gawain. Your narrator is Nicola Branch. In the next chapter of the Immortal Tales of the Table Round, Guinevere and Lancelot ride together. Arthur meets a mysterious jouster, and in an era of peace, knights rush out to find adventure. <laughs>